And welcome back to the Emissary Authors Podcast, where we help faith-driven founders, executives, and entrepreneurs tell the stories that matter. My name is Paul Edwards. Uh, joining me, uh, I'm excited to have on the show my co-host and partner in crime, Jason Todd. Jason, great to see you again, my friend. How are you? It's really good to be here, and I am uh, genuinely excited about this author because not only does he have a great book called Rose Therapy, but a great message behind it and sort of a, a, a second act to his professional career in, in this idea of selling this book, Rose Therapy, and all the speeches that he gives. But also, I think uh, what's really special about Ron is that he was Emissary's first author. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're excited to follow up with him about a year later since uh, his book came out. So let's get to it. Ron Daniels joining us on the Emissary Author Podcast. Ron, how are you, my friend? Great to see you good. again. Good. I'm good. Welcome to Gadwall Abbey, my rose garden, and uh, thrilled to be out here. Going to be out here uh, this weekend with hopefully three to 400 people So uh, that we're expecting, and uh, hopefully the weather will hold up. It looks pretty good, about 82 and, and partly cloudy. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. That way I get to mix with other gardeners and people and uh, opportunity to sell some books. Last year, I sold 60 or 70 books. I think it's around 60 something books in my open garden. Wow. And, uh, but, uh, it was pretty cool. So I'm looking forward to that because all you know, I mean, just, you know, I like to be around people and especially gardeners. They come in here with smiles on their faces and questions. And my daughter, bless her heart, she will not allow me to come into the garden uh, when we have this open garden because of the, uh, she wants me to meet and greet everybody that mm -hmm. comes, which is pretty important. And then a plus, if, uh, it's when you have an open garden and you're greeting people, uh, I have to kind of do double du duty with my book, Rose Therapy, because, you know, they want that. So I've got people that's going to help me with that this weekend, get their names, their money. And all I got to do is sign them. And, uh, so I've learned a whole lot from you guys mainly about how to do this and, uh, I just been having a ball this past year and yeah. the book, the presentations I give, it just drives the book. And, uh, I'm trying to balance my life with it because, uh, as Paul knows, and you too, Joe, I have passion for this. And, uh, when you got a non gardening wife and, uh, it's kind of tough, you have to kind of balance all this. So all my presentations that I book, I try to put them spread out enough to where I can spend time with my family also. Yeah. Well, if you're, if you're listening on the audio version of the podcast, Ron is sitting outdoors in his uh, beautiful uh, rose garden, which I've personally visited, uh, got the opportunity to tour through it and see uh, just how, how, uh, how much of a master he is uh, with growing and caring for roses. And of course, if you're watching on the video, this is the book. You, you often see it in my, in my background. Now we got two copies of it on the screen, Rose Therapy, My Journey of Growing and Caring for Roses. And, uh, Ron came to me in, uh, late 2022, uh, and we started talking about this and, and um, when, uh, Jason and I launched Emissary together, Ron was kind of be our very first author. So Ron, I want to start there and go back in time a little bit and, uh, let's talk about how this all came together and, uh, what, you know, what was it that was happening in your life that you decided, you know, it's about time I wrote a book about this and. Then, uh, you know, our mutual friend, Aaron Walker put us together. So let, take us back in time to. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I woke up last year and figured out I was an aging Rosarian. <laughs> uh, so, uh, the way I had some great people around me and Aaron Walker's always been there for advice for me. Not, uh, he didn't give me a whole lot of business advice, but he, you know, I, I've always looked up to him just, you know, just how to treat people. He's just unbelievable hiking with people and that's kind of his business if you stop and think about it and so i trust him so much so i had a bunch of people uh some of my family my daughter in particular people that i associated with and master gardeners and roses i said ronson you did this so well and you explain it and make it so simple that you need to write a, a book uh, on that. And I said, well, I'm no writer. I don't know. I can tell you, I can sit down and show you and tell you, but I, you know, I just, it was all foreign to me. So in November of 2022, I called Aaron. I never will forget it. And I called him. I said, Aaron, I said, I need your advice. He said, well, you know, 
I mean, you know, I'm here for you. And uh, he's, he's been such a great friend. And I said, Aaron, I said, uh, I'm thinking about writing a book or, you know, recording this stuff I've learned over the last 30 years and been a gardener all my life, but grew roses for 30 years. And Aaron said, well, Ron, are you doing this for money? I said, no, I've been blessed with a business that I enjoyed it. You know, it's been business for 42, 43 years. It continues. No, I'm definitely not doing it for money. I'm doing it because I want to, I don't want this stuff to be forgotten or buried. And I want to record this. And he said, well, I got just the person for you. And I said, well, where does he live here in Nashville? He said, nope, he's in the state of Washington. I said, state of Washington? I said, how are we going to make that? He said, Ron, he'll make it work. You just get a hold of it. And so uh, that's where it began. And, uh, of course, you know, we worked all winter on that. And uh, by spring, we had it all, you know, put together. And, Jason, you come in there and help publish a thing and put put it all together and put it out the, the cover you know was look the name and the cover was really important to me and and uh when i first got the cover i never will forget this i said you know this isn't my garden because you, when you when you garden you think about putting your own stuff out in front of people you know mm -hmm. and i'm thinking you know but and then jason explained to me he said you know that's a picture of some somebody uh coming to your garden they're not there physically, but a place to sit in the garden. Well, you know, that, that tells a story there. That's pretty good. And then the roses that were in that picture, it was so weird. I knew every one of them grew grown today. That's what's so strange about it. And I thought, oh my gosh. And, uh, so I kind of had some issues with that. And then till y'all explained the meaning of it and what it said, what the, I get a lot of compliments on that cover. I mm -hmm. mean, a lot of them. And believe it or not, people pick the book up and, and they'll feel a, they feel soft. I think I never thought of that. And uh, even the paperback does. And so uh, we accomplished that. And then I've had this rose therapy thing, and I never mentioned it in the book. I talk about it here on the podcast, and I talk it on uh, uh, several times on Road Chat podcast before, the, where I came up with that name. Several years ago, in fact, when I moved into this house 10, 11 years ago, I was build, rebuilding building this new garden, and I just bought maybe 20 or 30 rose bushes. They were sitting out here in the garden, not planted in, in the ground yet. And my wife comes flying out of the house and throws her hands up and says, if you buy one more rose bush, get you some better. So, <laughs> rose therapy, this is cool. So, I started using it on my email and and email address and and uh seemed like most people liked it and uh if you live long enough you get some kind of therapy i know i've had other therapy of marriage therapy and personal therapy and everything else so so we accomplished as a team jason and paul and myself we accomplished what i had the vision for mm. and paul would always tell me he said this is your book we want to do it your way. We want, want it to sound like you. We want, it, want, you, want you to bring out the points of the book that you, that you feel comfortable with. And I think we accomplished that. And I don't know if Jason will remember this and, uh, and Paul, is once we finished it, this book and it came out, I told them, I said, you know what? I don't, if I don't sell two books, this has always already been a success because hmm. I've been able to record this stuff I've learned in 30 years and put it in writing and explain it to the point, um, uh, to make it simple for the reader. Um, Roy and Rose is most people look at it as being complicated and, and you know, most people that in their business life, you know, it's not simple. You got to learn it. You know? So we, you know, you always look back on the book and say, well, I want to, what if I put that story in there about my wife, where the name came from? You know, I don't know why I missed that. <laughs> Deep piece at home, I think. But, if uh, if you if you uh, unfortunately we don't uh, we don't get the uh, the privilege of having Francie Daniels on the show today. Uh, see, yeah. one of the reasons we we brand Ron's book as um, combining Southern charm and storytelling with gardening is because they are quintessential um quintessential southerners and if you've ever heard francine talk i hear her sometimes in the background when i'm on the phone with ron yeah. sounds exactly like 
Like, oh yeah, we were born and raised right in Nashville, Tennessee, and then our all our parents and grandparents they come off the farm. So mm-hmm. I was the first I was the first child born in a hospital, to put it that way. And so I lived in a household of 1,250 square foot with grandparents and parents in the same home. There were nine of us. Yep. So I was the first one to leave. I run out of there at 18 and a half because there wasn't room, you know, yep. but I gained a lot from it. That's where I got a lot of my gardening uh, DNA is from my family. And I talk about it in the book and, uh, give them credit for it. And, uh, and for a lot of them, especially my grandparents, it was, it, you know, gardening to them was how that it was survival garden that they mm-hmm. wasn't doing the fly. My, my grandfather appreciate what I do, but he would probably laugh at it. He said, can you eat them? I said, <laughs> well, no, not. Yeah, you really can. You, there's a whole recipe on using roses in recipes, but, uh, a whole book on it, but he, he would kind of laugh at it. Uh, my father was more into perennials and that's what roses are. And he grew more flowers, but he had a garden too. But uh, my background is so poor. We were very poor. And, well, we really were rich because I had a lot of, man, I had great, my grandparents was great to be around because they taught me one thing that they come through the Depression years and they taught me one thing that a lot of kids don't learn today, and that's to be content right where you are today. Yeah. Be happy. And my parents were like that, but my grandparents, were they were like on steroids with because they didn't waste anything. and. Uh, that everything had a purpose, but gardening was our focus in our family because we had a huge vegetable garden. My dad had a huge, uh, perennial garden and he grew a few roses and he lived long enough to see me get into this. And he said, well, he said, I don't know how you do it. I couldn't do it. He said, but, but really his teaching and other family members teaching led me to this with, which I talk about a lot in the book about mentorship, how strong yeah. it is and still when I do my presentations to this day, I tell them, I describe the book this way. The book, I'll tell you in the book how to, how to grow roses and pitfalls, but I also will tell you about membership. And then in the book, I talk about sharing this information and my garden, which I'm doing this weekend, uh, and, uh, mentoring, mentoring people. I try to mentor a couple, two or three people a year at, at some level. And some of them, I had a girl come in here last year at my open garden and she walked in the gate. She said, Mr. Daniels, I've been following you for a year and a half and never met you. And I said, how'd you follow me? And I didn't really have a good Facebook page. Well, I had a Facebook page, but I didn't have a lot of good. So I just followed you on, on PBS stations, on a volunteer gardener and some of the local stuff you've done at the lawn and garden shows. I've been to your workshop. She never introduced me, but she learned how to grow roses by just by that alone. Mm, and yeah. she come to my, never been to my garden. She, she got here. The garden started at 10. She was here at nine 15 <laughs> and she bought the, my first book here at my garden. And I've got a picture of her. And, uh, of course this is the books already written. Of course I couldn't put her in there, but I got her in my presentations. Yeah. So I tell people this lady here learned uh, just by following me, you know? And, mm-hmm. uh, so, uh, and I never will admit that girl. She, she, she lived 30 something miles south of here. I never will run into her probably more likely unless I did a presentation down her way somewhere. So, uh, the book is really, really, uh, written and, 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 you know, Aaron said this, you know, it'll give you a lot more credibility, uh, in the gardening world. And I, I can sit here the past year. I mean, I made that trip to Florida for two months to stay with my nephew and I booked seven presentations down there myself and it was it don't matter where you're at the book is is good no matter what mm. and as you know paul i don't know i don't know if jason said i got a great review from ars uh, the american rose society yep. by a lady i have total respect for it's been growing roses for 40 years so if she gives you that kind of review it means something and i didn't mm-hmm. ask her to do it ars asked her to do it and uh and paul you know how long we worked on that we worked on that over a year to make that happen yep and uh, yep. i don't know uh yet how it's gonna affect. we're doing the advertising in there monthly now uh, every two months you know monthly and i don't know how it's gonna affect sales or whatever but i'm getting the message now out in the united states oh between eight and nine hundred row societies and stuff like that so 
And we have about 10 to 12,000 members in the American Road Society that are members. So hopefully uh, it'll get out there. And, uh, and a good barometer is the emails I get and the invitations to go speak, you know. And, and uh, now, <laughs> now I've got to speak. I've got to, I'm going back to a place I went, didn't have the book over a year and a half ago up in Orangeburg, Kentucky at uh, the Western Kentucky Botanical Gardens. They restored old rose garden they had me come up and do a presentation and i gave them a game plan on how to restore it now they've restored it and they've sent me pictures they restored and they want me come up to the dedication next month to do a presentation and a book signing they're going to invite everybody i mean they got she said close to 300 wow and they are and, and they'll actually my speaking fees have went up because of it and all, but, um, uh, my wife, she always tells me, so you're giving that stuff away for free. My wife, <laughs> that's it, honey, this is something I love. It's my passion, but that's a direct, you know, and they're excited about my book because they went online and looked at it and all that, but they're excited about getting it. And so that's a direct results from everything that's happened the past year. And so, yeah. but I, I've, I've had just, like I said, guys, I've just had a, ball with this and continue to do it i can't wait to this weekend because i'm gonna see people i hadn't met yet that are coming and caitlin my daughter's been so good what she'll do any anywhere i speak i get the president's email address and then last week we sent out invitations to all these presidents and they tell the members and that's where they come and they'll come from 150 200 miles away yeah it's unbelievable my fellow rosarians don't believe that many people come, come to my garden till they come to my garden so yeah. Yeah. I think the, the contentment that you mentioned there that you yeah. got from your grandparents and your parents yeah. Ron, has really served you well, because yeah. you know that what you're sharing is valuable and yeah. yet you're not, it's, you're, you're not counting on people to come through for you no, to share no. it. You're just sharing it from a place of strength and abundance and joy and all of that. Yeah. And, uh, and well, then of course, but, you know, I was, I was, I was, I was doing a post, um, yesterday sharing a little excerpt from the end of your book Yeah, and you, and you pointed out how, you know, even when COVID-19 came, They're not coming to get me guys. Yeah. <laughs> the cause of police in the background. We got um, a construct, we got a construction site up. That's probably my son-in-law. They yeah. got a construction guys up here and they fall off a roof up there about every, every day. Oh, wow. Okay. All right, guys. Sorry. No, but I was going to mention during COVID, right? You, yeah. you had a place to be outside and everybody else was huddled indoors. That was the, the excerpt I was sharing from your book. Absolutely. Today. My wife went stir crazy, but I had a place to go where it was safe and uh, I, I didn't have to think about it, had to get into it. Um, and then a lot of my fellow gardeners had the same thing. We all talk mm -hmm. about the same thing about how it was a good, it was, huh. It was good therapy to be in the garden during the pandemic and all, and in, and in the gardening world, oh my gosh, everybody, the nurseries business boom. I mean, they sow more, they run out of plants, uh, and gardening in general is billions and billions of dollar, uh, thing all over the country. A lot of people, not just my age, but a lot of people in the gardening, uh, more than, you know. It, it, mm -hmm. all different levels. And I find that out when I do my presentation and, um, uh, but the whole thing about when I do my presentation, what really, really gets me is when I, when they, um, uh, send me a picture of a boat, they maybe buy three or four roses, they cut a bouquet and bring it and put it on their table and take a picture of it. And they email them to me and you know, then that they've kind of got the bug, you know, yeah. they've seen the results of this and then then I get a bunch of them all the time where you say, you know, I never would uh, grew roses if you hadn't made it sound so simple. <laughs> but really being a American Rose Society consulting rosarian, that's what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed to make everything complicated. The most complicated thing uh, I talk about in the book is pH. Yeah. It's important in growing everything and, and soil. I mean, them two things are very important. And, uh, but I don't get into breaking down the soil. I don't get into, uh, I talk about organic and inorganic fertilizers. I think if you don't keep it simple, people are not going to take the hobby up. Yeah. And, uh, uh, I've learned about gardening in general and hobbies in general, 
if you don't have success on the front end, you're going to the next thing. Yeah. You have to give them some success. I always tell the new members, I say, I'm going to, I'm going to mentor you and I'm going to teach you and you come to my presentation, but you'll take these facts and you will find your own method to get to that rose. And they do like John Winter, the guy that, that did my forward in, in the, in the uh, book, he never grew a rose. Yeah. And he has almost 80 now and beautiful roses. And he, uh, but said, John, I'm going to teach you and mentor you, but you're going to have your own, uh, method of getting to that rose. Yeah. And, and I did, I had a great mentor, but I took some of his stuff he taught me. And, I, and you got to understand this hive is changing. The roses are changing. Uh, the fertilizers are changing from every now and then. And the methods are changing according to where you live and what zone you live in. So, so then there are other things, Ron, that are not changing and in a, in a good way. Right. Cause what you yeah. talk about in the book is timeless stuff. Like you got to find a mentor yeah, and you got to find an outlet like you did with the, the, the weddings and the floral ministry yeah. the church yeah. you to, right. It's like, you you're, know, used, you're growing the roses, but what's yeah. really happening is you're building these pathways of connection with people that is just. Yeah. It's, it pays dividends. Like yeah, uh, if I write another book, it's going to, I mean, it's going to be the cause and effect of that ministry because, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, God's put me in the path of like during the pandemic, for instance, and I mentioned in the book, I mean, I mean, I was locked up in this house. My daughter's bringing food to the front door. Of course I had the garden, which we talked about a while ago, but, uh, but I learned different ways to minister with my flowers. Yeah. I had this lady just call me out of the blue. She said, Ron said, what are you doing? I said, well, I'm out here working in my garden. I got all kinds of roses in the cooler in here. And she said, uh, I've got a ministry I think might work right now. And I said, what is that? She said, well, my daughter's a nurse over here at their local hospital and they're working 16 hours a day. I mean, they really, you know what they were doing back then. Yeah. I said, could you make some up some flowers for them nurses? And I said, well, sure. Yeah. So I put them together. Of course, I couldn't come in the hospital. I had to deliver them to the emergency room. Can you believe that? I come in mercy and leave them out there to sliding glass uh, doors. And I did that for several months. And I got emails and calls from them nurses, people I didn't even know. In fact, this is, I never told you this story, but I got COVID that November. And oh. I went in the emergency room for six hours. Two of the nurses and one of the doctors, female doctors, that took care of me. I had no chest stuff and I had a sinus infection, but I walked, I did have, I did have COVID and they kept me in mercy room for six hours. My wife couldn't even come in there. And, mm. uh, but them ladies received some of my roses later. And I, you know, I didn't designate them to go there. They just took them and spread them out. So I had opportunities and Mr. Curtis, who mentioned me said, always look, I think that's one of the reasons why he was so successful in this hobby, because he always shared them. He yeah. shared his knowledge. He shared his garden. Uh, he shared his roses and he told all that to me. And then in the book, I talk about having a purpose for growing them. And I always tell new growers, I said, you need to find, find the kind of roses you like and have a purpose. It makes it easier when you're doing the work part of it. Yeah. Uh, know that there's some end results and, and, uh, but, uh, uh, but like I said, there's a lot of opportunity to share information and a lot of people say, what do you do in the winter? Well, in the winter, I'm teaching yeah. and, and dreaming about spring, you know, and the beauty part about being down in Florida, they're a couple months ahead of us. So when I was down there in February, they're already getting roses. Yep. Here I am down here we'll get my roses to now, the first, first week in May or whatever. So it was pretty good. I learned a lot down there. And uh, like I've told you, Paul, every time I do a presentation, I, you think you've heard every question, but you hadn't. You learn from them presentations and that keeps you pretty sharp, uh, not only doing presentations, but gardening. I'll have somebody come up to me and tell me some stuff that I've been doing this 30 years. I've never had no, heard this question. Yeah. So but then we got a lot of people moving here. Well, they're coming back after another construction <laughs> worker. Sorry. <laughs> guys. I'm sorry. But anyway, Law enforcement. Our, our, our local. Working. Church Parker. responders making an unscheduled appearance really on the Unitary Authors podcast. I'm out. Well, what, Paul, I'll tell you, I'm out away from everything. So we've got Mercy, Mercy Bishop is coming up here. But anyway, 
I knew this was going to happen, but that's all right. But that's how, that's how, that's how social this garden is. Yeah. <laughs> I have right. people walk up off the street. I mean, uh, not necessarily an ambulance, but they come up here. But, uh, but anyway, it's, the book has just been a fun thing to have. And, do. and I tell you, my wife says, I love the book. I said, why? She says, I love it because when somebody emails or calls you, you can say, go to page 99. Yeah. And they can read about fertilization or if, uh, if you want to learn about some of the minis- ministries, go to this page. Or if you want to see some pictures of Gadwall Abbey, go to this page. So, you know, people like down in Florida, they've never been to my garden, but I had pictures, yeah. pr- which have added. And then at the end of my presentations, I talk, they give me 10 or 15 minutes to talk about my book. And, uh, so it, it's just been a total, total, I just had so much fun with and never would dream two or three years ago, that this would happen. I just said, you know, no, that's not going to happen. Well, if you told me 10 or 15 years ago, I was going to be speaking as much as I do, I'd say you're crazy because we all know the two biggest fears in life, don't we? Yeah. Death and public speaking. Right. And my right. wife, my, my sons have come to my, they said, dad, dad, we just know, didn't know you had that in you. Cause I yeah. never did much of that. You no. Know? And, uh, I did my mom's eulogy and, and they said, dad, we didn't know you could even do that. Yep. You know, my boy's a corporate guy. Well, one of them runs my business and the other's a big corporate guy in pharmaceuticals. And they do a lot of presentations, you know, especially my oldest boy. And I said, well, if you got a passion for something and you love it and you believe in it, it's easy to talk about. Exactly. I have to, I have to have people, <laughs> I designate somebody in my presentation to be the team police because I'll go down some, you know, some stories cause I got a lot of them, you know, and. So, so uh, the one other thing I wanted to ask about Ron, cause yeah. we talked about this before, you know, you go into detail, um, your career was in, uh, construction, yeah, uh, yeah. ground equipment yeah. and all that yeah. sort of thing. We're still doing that big time. And you mentioned that having the Rose Garden was a place to unwind from yeah. Yeah. the stresses of construction is a very stressful uh, right. industry. And then you had this, this haven, this quiet place of tranquility you could go to. So, right. and, and what we, as we talked about that in some of our uh, sessions, uh, I remember Jason pointing out, you know, this is, this is something really important because a lot of entrepreneurs, like all they do, all they ever do is work and they yeah. don't have a place like that. They can go. So yeah. talk, talk a little bit about that. Well, uh, I have, I have never drank. I've never smoked. I've never done drugs. Mm-hmm. I usually did most of my stress relief when I was younger through recreation ball. I played on travel softball teams and travel basketball teams up to I was 55 or 58. And then my knees gave way and I got two new knees. But, uh, yes, the garden, before I even come into the home, when I, it, I've had three gardens, this is my third one. Before I even come into the garden, I have been in the house when I'd work. And I worked long hours when you first start a business. Y'all got to know that. Y'all work a lot. Yep. And, uh, so I was working 10 hour days and I'd come in the house and I had two little boys and, and I'd go through the garden first just to calm down. Uh, construction is uh, real stressful, uh, mobilization and dealing with, uh, contractors and site conditions. And it's all kinds of stuff that you can't predict every day. Uh, making sure all your employees are on the same page, you know, and, uh, all the things they bring to the table. So it was, it was, uh, very stressful. And I was very fortunate to get through that period of time to have this garden because I would gardening all my life. I seen my dad and my grandparents and, and my mom, even she worked some day when I was in high school, the gardening thing was, was kind of a stress reliever for them. I didn't talk about it a whole lot in the book, but they, they used that, uh, they wasn't on no meds and nothing like that. So I kind of seen it growing up. So I kind of learned it. My wife, she was the exact opposite. Her, her family was like the circus. I mean, they didn't know what they was going to eat at supper because they didn't have no money or nothing because everything was, I was very system. My household was because we had so many, we were very systematic in everything we did. So mm-hmm. I could tell her on Wednesday what we were going to eat. And she laughed at it. She said, you know what you got? Yeah, we're having hamburger steak on Wednesday. <laughs> it's just like, it had to be with that bigger family in one bathroom, by the way. So, but 
But anyway, yeah, I think that really saved me. And then as I got older, I told my son, this happened 11 years ago. I told him, I said, son, there's one thing you don't say in your last days. And he said, dad, what is that? And I said, uh, you don't say, I wish I'd worked more. Yeah. You never say that. It's just always going to be somebody to take your place. And I've been very extreme. I was going to sell my business, by the way, at that time, 10 years ago. Uh, my son had not been with me 20 something years, but he showed no interest in taking it over. But he did. Really, that's another blessing from the pandemic because he, uh, uh, our business was doing good and he had to, he had to think outside the box to keep the thing afloat mm. and with him for six months and help him do that. And I told him, I said, you need, you're going to learn more about yourself in this business during this period of time. You did in the last 30 something years here. So, but, uh, we all know I've lived long enough. No, you learn life lessons from adversity. Yeah. And that's kind of like gardening. Gardening teaches that. Uh, if you, uh, if you have something go wrong in the garden, I mean, trust me, I talked in the book. Every season's different. Yeah. Everything's bloomed. Normally this time, at this particular time, I don't have this many flowers blooming. Mm. I'm a week ahead, a week to 10 days ahead here in the South. And but every year is different. But uh, this is my strip. My wife don't understand it. I'll come out here and work three hours. I'm right out here in the garden. She can see me. I'm not running around playing golf or, or fishing. I've done all that. And, and, uh, but I'll come out here and it's good physical uh exercise it's good i get to energy mix with people just i don't i don't know they come right up to the they come to this fence up here and say we love your garden and the next thing you know we're talking about granny's garden and where they come from from indiana or wherever so it's been a good social thing for me and early on in my uh even being in business i wasn't really uh outgoing as much as i am today and have I show more grace with people, which I think we all need to. And I talk about that in the book about, uh, I have terminally ill people come to this garden, got two weeks to live. Mm. Got to show some grace there. And they'll apologize a hundred times. Oh, we come unannounced. I said, listen, this is for the public. I don't grow these for myself. I yeah. grow this to share. And so this is a safe place. This is a safe place to come. And they come here and that's, you know, that's one of the things I might write another book about is about the cause and effect of this hobby on people, which yeah. I mentioned in the book, some, but that's a driving force for me because, uh, it thrills me to death. If somebody picks this up hobby up and shares and share that like John Winter, he's sharing his knowledge. Like I, he's mentoring people now. Yeah. That's, that's unbelievable for him. If you knew him and John, uh, you talked to him, oh, he's a corporate guy. I mean, he was marketing director for tractor supply. Yeah. I mean, Big wheel, man. I'm telling you, and uh, but came unbelievable friend. I didn't think I'd ever meet a man, and that's another thing. But this hobby does. It joins people from all walks of life. I have a heart surgeon comes to my open garden. I mentor them in growing roses, and they'll come to lawyers or professional people. I mean, it's unbelievable. But it's a common theme here. We yeah. all love flowers. We all love roses, and that think that anytime you can connect with people. My grandparents did, and my, my dad would connect with the whole neighborhood, uh, the community, through his gardening. So uh, I was able to carry that on. But it to me, yeah, the question of relieving stress, I think it does. It really does. And then I, I get on, when I go do a presentation, I just get on a total. And my, uh, my kids, they walk in here, and they say, Dad, when are you going to downsize? When are you going to downsize? When are you going to when are you going to get in something smaller? When are you going to do this? And, you know, I may have to do that. And I'm smart enough to know that. But now, the time, you know what? Tomorrow. <laughs> but now, I just, I'm going to continue this as long as I can do it. Uh, I've started to get a little bit of help. I've got one employee that loves gardening. He came over here on Saturday and helped me mulch and stuff like that. I mentored him right along while he's helping me. So, uh, I'll carry it on as long as my health Let's be do it. Yeah. Yeah, that's great, Ron. I, I mean, you're so many of the things you're saying are are embodying and communicating the essence of an emissary author, which is what yeah. makes you a great one, right? It, let, it, let me tell you what people one, in the one, yeah, one up over story that will tie in y'all's to the business world. I had this man, this was 
this was before I even had the book. This is a couple of years ago. I had this man, he must have been between 80 and 90. He come up to me after my presentation and he said, sir, that was a great presentation. He said, uh, are you still working? I said, no, I just do this now. He said, well, you're doing the three things that you need to be doing at your age. And I said, what's that? He said, you, you around people. Think about this guys. Y'all, you around people, uh, you're teaching and you're solving problems. Yeah. He says, that's the three things you do in the work world. I said, and he'd retired from two different jobs. I mean, he said, he said, but you were doing, you, you were, you were doing the three things you did in your construction business. Mm-hmm. He was around people, solving problems, and you're continuously learning. And I think if you, tra- whatever you transition into from retirement and I've golfed, I finished, I lo- I'm a sports nut. I'll go to the Titans games. I, I'll do it. My dad was a coach, so I'm really into sports and I played sports. But, uh, you know, you can only do so much of that, you know? Yeah. So, uh, you know, like I said, this has filled that void from the construction business to here. And funny thing about it, my youngest son, who, who uh, you know, I, I go with him once a week and look at jobs. I went with him yesterday for half a day, and I still own the company, still stay connected to it through him. But he's starting, it's funny, he turns 55 next week and he's starting to turn into, said, Dad, he said, uh, I understand what you're doing now. Yeah. He said, doing this hobby. I said, I thought you was over the top for years. I thought you was a nut. I said, but I'm understanding it more. I'm going to have to have something when I transition out of this company. I said, you're right. And he's in the cards. Like, I mean, mm-hmm. he has, uh, y'all, it, it blow you away, but he has a, $2 million dollar collection of cards. I mean, oh, this, okay. he's been, I'm talking about LeBron James card. I mean, he's, he, he goes to these shows. That's his hobby. Mm-hmm. He's, he bought his wife a card of a day, sold a card, pay cash for it. Yeah. So, I mean, he don't borrow any money, he may, but he, well, son, that's your hobby right there. When you get out of it, you know, there, and you make a whole lot more money. I don't make no money in roses, anything on my books and all. And I'm getting pretty close to breaking even on my cost. Yeah. So that's, that was my goal to write it, record it, and try to break even on it. But, uh, but anyway, it's, it's, uh, it's been a, it's, it's really been a good life thing for me. And, and some of the people around me, my family are seeing to it, seeing a lot more than they did in the beginning with it. But, uh, you can't hide passion. You can't hide desire. If you got it, you, it's going to show up somewhere and anybody that knows has learned something, they share that. Uh, when I, I go to, when I go to presentations myself and I get a lot of CEUs, I get, I go and listen to, I have to put, keep my master gardener certificate. I can tell the ones that's got passion and ones that hadn't it's just going through the motions. Yeah. It's easy to find. It's easy to find. And you'll get criticized for it. You'll get criticized for it because. They think that's the only thing you are. I mean, that, that's how you exist. Yeah. That's part of my life. But I love people and I love to teach. I love to teach. I've got friends. It's a lot better gardeners than me. I've got a gross buddy, grows 600 roses. He said, Ronnie, no way I'd ever go out and do that. What you do. So, well, you've got the knowledge. Why not? Oh, I just couldn't do that. I just mm. couldn't go and do that. I have professional people, architects I deal with that tell me all the time. He said, I couldn't do that. No way. Yeah. So, but. I had that desire for it and the passion and it comes off and, um, uh, I just love it. And I don't know how much longer I'm going to be able to do it, but I'm going to continue a lot long as God gives me, uh, the health, the mental. And, and that's another thing, you know, the emotional mental health it gives you in gardening is so refreshing Yeah. You, about during the pandemic, but day to day it is too. Oh yeah. yeah. Well, as we, uh, as we bring this in for a landing run, um, I was, uh, I'm just, I'd, I'd like for the audience to hear since you are, you know, the original, the, the OG of emissary authors, you know, you know, to the, to this morning, I did not know that but I <laughs> feel privileged because anytime you get beginning, it's always, it's always good. Yeah. And you guys, you guys are a great team and y'all going, y'all going to do great things. I can just, I can just feel it. You're going to do it. And you both have passion for what you're doing and. Hey, that's, that's, it's like Aaron Walker. You know what? Aaron Walker has been working since he was 14, 15 years old, but 
you get around him and you get kind of on a high, mm -hmm. I mean, he's like, you know, yeah, I can do that. <laughs> he's a great coach. I yep. mean, he's a great coach. And I just love listening to him. I've been able to listen to him in our local church. He had kind of restore our church after we had God pruned it. We, he was at the right place at the right time. But he, anytime I've ever seen him, he's always got an encouraging word for me. And that's, you know, we all look up to certain people and he's not perfect. He'll tell you, he'll be the first one to tell you that. But hey, nobody's ever going to accuse him of not having passion. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. He's the king of it. I'm telling you. So, so let's finish with this, Ron. I'd yeah. like to hear, you know, what do you, what's, what's different for you having gone through the process with us? of writing and publishing and promoting your book? Like what's the big, the big change that you could say, you know, if I hadn't done this, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have this. Well, I kind of looked at y'all and Paul, you may remember this off. Uh, you, you guys have got, I mean, you've got, y'all taught me. I mean, you taught me what this, this business is about, even though I was paying you, I knew all that, but, uh, you, you taught me and coach me up through the whole process. And I don't know if you remember, Paul, I said, Paul, tell me why, why are we doing this? Why are we saying this? Hmm. Uh, Jason, why are we using this cover? Why are we illustrating like this? I mean, for me, it was an educational thing. It was something I knew nothing about. I thought books were written like Hemingway. You got a bottle of whiskey and, and went, to, <laughs> went to South Florida and got in a house and a typewriter and wrote a book. I didn't know. I didn't know we could do all this on Zoom and, and you could interview me all these times and pull this story together. So I learned, try to learn, I tried to learn from it. And I did. And when I'm able to refer y'all to somebody, halfway know what I'm talking about. Like Larry, you know, I said, Larry, I said, Larry, you need to get this down. I said, this stuff's going, I mean, you've had, my goodness, you've had all this experience. And I wrote a gardening book. I mean, I may change a few people's lives, but what you're doing is, I mean, it's life changing. I mean, yeah. it is. They need to know what you've been through. And so I think more than anything, uh, you educate, y'all educated me about this, about doing this, about it's not, it's not painful. It's not that painful to go through. I don't have to sit in front of a, 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 a laptop and write this stuff, every little thing, you know? No. So I think that people look at it like, you know, I have nothing to say. You know, you live long enough, you got a story. Mm -hmm. Somewhere in there is a story. Y'all y'all look for it every day. Uh, I like to see you guys do more uh, things that have to do with hobbies. You know what I'm saying? Y'all yeah. do a lot of business and spiritual books, which I love. And I, I read them. I get something from them. But, you know, uh, I think, Paul, we've talked about this before. And Jason, about tra people transitioning from a, 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 a career into something other than you know, playing golf is good and fishing is good. I missed that two or three times, but if you do enough of that, you'll get fat. <laughs> yeah. And I love golf and I love fishing, but they're sitting most of the time. Yeah. So gardening gives me that physically and I have nothing against people to do that, but you can only play so much golf. You only travel as much as your money will let you. Yeah. So you need something to fill that void. But I think you guys, what y'all did to narrow it all down, through the whole process, y'all educated me. And that's the secret. Just like buying uh, mutual funds. If you don't understand them, don't buy them. Yeah. So y'all, y'all made it easy enough for someone like me, a lay person and never written anything other than a contract, you know, for a proposal or something for a job, uh, to make my, uh, my dream come true to, to write this book and have this stuff. I got tickled my daughter. She said, dad, who you leave that book to? And I said, you, you got, you've got my publishing rights. It's already in my will. Mm. And the boys were all right with that because they knew she had, you know, she had helped me through this process and helped us, didn't she, Paul? Sure she did. Us yeah. through the whole process. So I wanted somebody to have it, loved it, you know, and not that the boys don't appreciate what I do, but uh, she. Well, now really she wants it. to write a book of her own. Yeah. She, I, I've talked to well, her. There you go. Oh. There you go. There you go. So uh, I think the main takeaway here is through this whole process, uh, you educated me. Larry said the same thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, and, uh, so I think there's, I'd like to see you guys write some more books in that area. Um, that, you know, like 
I think the best books, I think, are people that's been through it and then can teach you something through the book. And y'all do that. Mm-hmm. Like most of your, y'all's books are like that. But uh, like I tell Larry, I said, Larry, my book's gardening. It's light. He said, well, you affect people. I said, no, not like you. I mean, I mean that, that book is powerful. I mean, that's just powerful because that's real life. That's people that defended our country, like you, Paul. Mm-hmm. You was in the military. I'm sure you relate. I don't know about you, Jason, but uh, as far as military experience, but closest thing I can come to it, I'm, I'm an Eagle Scout. So <laughs> I respect them people. My dad top was a military guy. Totally respect uh, all first responders and military people completely. I don't care who they are. And and I'm the Vietnam era, you know, and I didn't go, but I, I had a physical problem. They wouldn't take me, believe it. And so, um, but anyway, I've enjoyed this whole experience with emissary. The whole thing has been great. I can't think of any negative things. You guys are good. If I call you, Paul, or Jason will reach out to y'all for some opinions and just like the advertising in the ARS. I want y'all's input in that because y'all been part of it. I value your opinion, and uh, we were working on that this winter, and I want to thank you for following through with all that stuff, you know, because, but Paul, you knew what I've been going through for a year to get to that. Or, oh, yeah. yeah. That's yep. one of my goals. Took I mean, a while, but we got it done. said, we're going to do it. And did y'all know that they vetted my book? They vetted that book. Yeah. They had five, four people read that book before I could even get in that magazine. Yeah. And it was, and then had the, one of the top ladies review it. That was awesome. So yeah. that goal accomplished and, and, and hopefully we can see some results from that and hope we have a vehicle to do that. Yep. To see if this magazine is going to, how it's going to do. And, uh, you know, if it's going, you know, we'll, I think we'll probably able to do that. Right guys. I mean, we'll know how effective we are on book sales. So well, we'll start to see some measurement from it for sure. If good it- that's what deal. it's supposed to do. Yeah. But, um, for this, for the purposes of this interview, Ron, this has been yeah. fantastic hearing all this background and all the things that have been going on. I know the, well, thank you guys. I, I appreciate and, you guys. I can see you guys friends and somebody can reach out and get advice from, and that, that, that means a lot to me. I talk to other people that's written some books. They don't have this relationship. Yeah. They don't, they don't have it. I said, you mean they didn't do that for you? Well, they didn't answer that question. Oh, they got back with me. It three or four weeks. You guys, you, you're on the right track for our service, and you, you think how I run my business. And uh, every, I don't care if you spend a hundred dollars or a hundred thousand or a million dollars. Every customer's important, and that's the way I've taught my son to run our business. And, and uh, but uh, this has been a great, great relationship, and hopefully, some will inspire me, and we'll sit down again and write maybe a cause and effect of all this. You know, I got I can some more wait. stories, as y'all well know. Well, I'm excited. Be great. Fill another yeah. book. My wife don't know this yet, so pray for me. She, my wife, bless her heart, she thought was going to write this book. It's going to be sitting up on the shelf in there. When I come home, I said, well, so 30 bucks today. You did what? So 30 bucks today. And we had open garden last year. We did 50, 60 books. She couldn't believe it. And yeah, we'll yeah. sell that many this, this spring. So I've got to think I've got enough here to do that. So we'll see. Hopefully the weather will be good and people will show. I'm only doing it one day this year. Yeah. I'm already cutting back a little bit on making it more balanced more balanced there we go well the book is rose therapy you can get it at rosetherapybook.com our author original the og of emissary uh, authors ron daniels joining us on the emissary pod uh, authors podcast where we help faith-driven founders ceos and entrepreneurs tell the stories that matter my name is paul edwards my co-host who barely said a word the entire time jason todd and this has been the Emissary Authors Podcast. He's, he's over. He's over at Creative. I was just listening. Right. You you said everything. You answered all the good questions. So I like. It was good. Thank you, Jason. I don't. I don't mean shy away from you. Nothing like that. Because I have a lot of respect for you. Because you know you're part of this. I, this is not my interview. This is about your book. Okay. Nobody all needs right. to hear me. Thank but that's okay. why we call him the thinker. He's over there he's thinking. The thinker. He's over at Creative. Yeah. Uh, I said, well, I'll be calling on you some more. Y'all be my fun publisher as long as I'm alive. So, you know, I'm always reach out to you for advice, and, and y'all always come through every time. So I appreciate both of you, not only as your what you do, what you do for me as far as the book, but as people on all that. You're good people, and that, that to me, like like Aaron Walker told me, he said you're gonna love these people. Yeah.
He's using grateful, him wrong. <laughs> grateful for you, my friend. And uh, until next time, we will see you next episode of the MSN. All right. Author I'll try podcast. to send you a video of my open garden. I'll get Kaden to do a video and I'll send it to both of y'all. Let's do that it. That way yeah. you, have, you, you can be here in video. Well, that was a great idea. See ya. Bless you, Ron. See ya. Uh,